Please rise for the light of Christ in his house this morning. Good morning, good morning. There, I got my button pushed now. I, a little bit better. You can hear me a little bit better. Well, welcome to worship here at Mount Lebanon UMC here in the beautiful small town of Randleman, North Carolina, and online throughout the world on our Facebook page. Greetings from our Father in Christ, our Lord and Savior, and greetings as we gather this day couple brief announcements this morning. Uh, first, if you'll turn your eyes towards the bottom of your order of worship, we've got a few announcements there. One is Run 5 Feet 5 Food Drive in conjunction with Parker Sterling is still going on. We've got donation boxes in the narthex and in the education wing. Uh, she will be collecting for a couple more weeks, I believe. Uh, so keep that in mind if you haven't already given. Uh, our second is our Blue Christmas, um, and for those of you that know me well, believe this or not, I've actually got almost all of the planning and design and everything figured out already and sent it to Russ to proofread. So, um, so if you know me well, you know that's a huge miracle since this is a few, a few day, uh, a couple weeks away. Uh, but Blue Christmas will be at 7 p.m. on the 21st, and that is a Tuesday. And then Christmas Eve service will be on Christmas Eve, the 24th, at 8 p.m. here. And all of these services are here at Mount Lebanon in the sanctuary. And we will uh, have a, a, a meaningful time in each of these services. And the Christmas Eve service will also include uh, communion. Uh, remember, we have our offering boxes, front and rear, and also remember that we do have our mission tree set up at, at the front, and if you feel so led to give to our, um, give to that miss, I'm not on the Mount Lebanon page. Oh, I'll move it, or share it or something for me. Um, Please, if you feel led to do so, please give to the uh, mission tree. That Those funds will all be designated to Randall Community Services, which does amazing work within our community to serve those that need our assistance as a community. And it is a communal group of uh, churches that all give to that. Also. On the bottom, the last uh, little reminder there is the 14th, which is this Tuesday, the United Methodist Women invite all of the women of the church to their annual Christmas party. This year they will meet in the party room at Sir Pizza um, at 6.30, and please bring a gift to exchange um, that has a maximum value of $10 for the gift exchange. So... All right. <laughs> you work so hard on your pies, you're going to eat some pie. 
<laughs> a little different kind of pie. <laughs> Square pie instead of round pie. Um, are there any other announcements that need to be raised this morning? See none. Let's enter into a time of worship with the passing of the peace. May the peace of Christ be with you today and every day. Join me in the lighting of the Advent wreath. It's a reunion every time we go home, every time we embrace those we love, no matter how long it has been, it feels like sunrise, like the clouds are parting and the rain has ended. It is joy, nothing less than pure joy, to grab hold of those who are home for us, who make home for us, whether we wake up to them every day or travel many miles to see them. It is a joy to go home. The prophet Zephaniah tells us to rejoice at the thought of going home. The prophet tells us to imagine being set free, being unburdened, being released to live, to fully live in the grace and wonder of life itself, surrounded by those who love us like no one else, and then to live like that was our truth even now, even here. John the Baptist reminds us, however, that it takes choices to live in this joy. It does not just happen. We choose to make life a joy by how we love others, by how we serve and give and care for others, by how we do the job that we do and how we impart, impact the world around us. We build this joy as we build a home in the world and in the next, as we light these candles of hope, of peace, and of joy. May this be a sign of our journey. And as we walk, not walk, but we skip into the step. We walk with a skip in our step because we can see the destination, and that destination is pure joy. Join me in prayer. Lord, we marvel in your joy. Lord, we marvel in your mystery. Lord, we marvel in all that you have provided for us, all that you give to us so that we may give as your children to your church as we give to those surrounding us in our community, and as we give like we never thought we'd be able to give before. It's all because of the joy that you bring to our hearts, our minds, and our souls. Be in this worship service this morning that it may, be, may bring joy to someone that hears it. May it be, bring joy to someone that is involved in it. May it bring joy to somebody seated here listening to these words today. Grant this joy among us. Grant this joy to each and every one of us. And may this joy be present in our life everlasting. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join us in song as we sing the Advent hymn, Angels from the Realms of Glory. Number 220 in your hymnals or on the screen.
Father, this past week I was reading in the scriptures about angels. Did you know that angels actually come and worship with us? The scripture tells us that. That's good news, isn't it? That the angels are here with us too. And I like to think that it's the angels that help us with the joy that our that Joel, Joel was telling us about, the joy of the opportunity to worship the newborn king. Yeah. I'm so thankful for a season like this, although I might tell you in February or March how much I love the Lord I'm going to tell him now, too, as we all worship together with a season that's all about him. And that's what it's all about. It gives us joy. It gives us peace. And it puts us all together as one. I kind of like that. We're not alone. We're just never alone. He's all there with us. Thank you for letting me say that. You may be seated. This time I would like to, to open it up to the congregation for prayer requests, praise reports, and updates on how each and every one is doing in our congregation today. Um, I'll start with uh, our brother Bill. Um, he's doing good. He's being transferred uh, to the rehab center uh, at High Point uh, Hospital, but it seems to be improving as as much as they can tell at this point. So continue to be in prayer for him, but uh, he seems to be improving. So, Erica? Yes, I'd like to thank everyone for praying for me. My surgery went fine, and thank God it's not cancer. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Amen. Erica's side's got them all today. Yes, I just want to thank y'all for y'all's prayers, and everything went good, and uh, I bop seeing everything. Praise God. Amen. Linda Lee had texted me this week and asked for uh, put a little four-year-old boy on our prayer list. His name is Finn. Uh, she didn't give me the last name, but it's F-I-N-N, -N, Finn. Finn. Uh -huh. It's friends of their family, and they found out the little boy has cancer, mm -hmm. and they'll be t trying to find some kind of treatment for him. Continued prayers for Michael Bailey, who remains in the Randolph Hospital. I just wanted to thank everyone for your prayers for my son, Eric. He's improving every day, thank goodness. And um, each day he's getting a little bit better. His motor skills are starting to come back like they were. So thank you for that. I hope that the women of the church will come Tuesday night because I'm telling you, Standing there those two days and shredding that chicken. <laughs> I told Martha Jane that was the best sleep I'd had both nights. I was going to get a job in a chicken factory. But if you men think you can put a wig on and sneak in, forget it. <laughs> well, I know one guy that's a, that, that is invited but will have to uh, decline because he has a band concert for a, a little one that looks a lot like me. So... Yes, and I also want us to pray for all the families that lost everything in the tornadoes over the weekend. Yes, for the for the four corners, it's not really the four corners, but it's the quad area there that uh, got just decimated by the tornadoes. Um, I've actually seen now two pictures, or two sets of pictures from two different United Methodist churches in May Maysville, Kentucky, in that uh, that one town that just was uh, was leveled by this tornado, and they're saying that tornado was historic; that it was upwards of a 200-mile stretch. So, 
can't even imagine. Are there others? I'd like for everybody to sing happy birthday to Gail today. <laughs> Gail thought, and Gail just oh. about fell off the pew back there. Uh-oh. She thought she was going to get away with it because I didn't know about it. All right. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Hey, at least I'm not in trouble for that one. <laughs> Are there others? Let us go to the Lord. Lord, we come to you at this time each week. But we come to you, Lord, each and every moment of each and every day. For our praying never ceases, never really stops. Our life and our minds and our souls are in constant states of prayer. Prayer for you, prayer for others, prayer for ourselves, prayer for each and every moment and each and every, every life. Lord, we come to you and ask specifically today for these names that have been raised up, for healing, for comfort, for the lifting of anxiety, for the, for the lifting of burdens that have been placed upon them. And you have given us reasons to praise you for lifting those burdens on other, from others, from lifting the anxiety of unknown test results by giving good results, by surgeries that have happened, by procedures that have happened, by things that we on this earth cannot really come to grips with, that it is only a miracle from you, Lord, that certain things have been able to happen. You have put the right people in the right places at the right times, Lord, so that these individuals may be healed from their ailments, may be cured from whatever has been in them, bothering them, infecting them. Lord, you have also put into our minds, put into our hearts, the want and the need to bear our souls for the lives that have been lost in the Kentucky tornadoes, in the Illinois, that area that was just totally and completely devastated by the lives that have been lost, by the, the ones that we may never know exactly how and why things happen, but in still we do know that you are in those lives today, Lord in the families of those lives, involved in that community, Lord. Continue to guide them through this tough time. Guide all of the churches that have been ruined as they rebuild. Guide all of the families that have been destroyed by property destruction. Continue to be and comfort those families. And be with all of those that are traveling to that area to help the cleanup process. And may we as your children come together to help your children. Guide us each and every day. Let us know that those angels are among us. Let us know that angels do exist and that your spirit is working in and through us. Just as it was working in and through your son, Jesus Christ our Lord by praying the prayer that he taught us to pray as he walked this earth, saying, Our Father. And forgive Leonard Skinner for starting as well. <laughs> Our scripture today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, the 26th verse, and it reads as follows. In the sixth, sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God 
to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And therefore the child will be born, will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month of her who is said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The word of God for us, the people of God. Be to God. Click it. No, all you had to do is click the movie. <laughs> of Christ shines in. We all go through life, going through multiple situations, encounter multiple people, and experience multiple things in which we know in our heart is right. We know in our soul it is right. But there's always someone there's always someone, that one person, that thinks that we're wrong. Now, are we wrong, or are they wrong? We know we've witnessed something. We know we've heard something. We know we have seen something with our own two eyes. And yet, when we hear the complete story, we wonder, who was really right? We don't all have a 360 degree view of the entire world. No one has that. Jesus did not even have that 360 degree view of the world. Jesus even had blind spots. But when we think about that, how is it that we always seem to know when we're right? And we know exactly how something occurred. Now, I can only imagine that as Mary was experiencing these moments of the angels coming down upon her and telling her exactly what was going to happen, there was this moment of confusion. There was a moment of perplexity as our 
Scripture says, there was a moment in which there was only fear in her heart, mind, and soul. Have you ever noticed that the angels always say, do not fear when they come? Every time there's an encounter with an angel, it is always ended with do not fear or starts with do not fear. Angels were feared. Why? I don't know. But angels seem to have been feared. Each and every moment that we live, we live in a moment that could possibly go one way or the others. Now we find ourselves in the middle of the Advent season. We have just lit our third candle, the candle of joy, a time in which we prepare for the coming of Christ. We have done the decorating. We have done all of the things to get ready in our minds. We've got most of our shopping done, hopefully. But at the same time, we hear of this scripture today from Luke, in which we hear Jesus' birth being foretold. It's called the Annunciation of Jesus. But at the same time, we're in this sermon series about the Grinch. And I know what's going through most of your heads right now. Is how can we, how can this guy standing up here combine the Annunciation with Mary with the, with the story, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas? Well, I think I've got it figured out. So let's give it a try. When we think about the story of The Grinch Who Stole Christmas... The Grinch is coming down on Christmas Eve and taking all of the stuff and shooting it up the fireplaces. He gets to Cindy Lou Who's house. And who comes down the stairs? But none other than Cindy Lou Who comes down the stairs and sees what's going on. Now Cindy Lou Who knows what's happening in this moment. But Cindy Lou Who doesn't go and tell anybody. Doesn't run and tell her parents that somebody is broken in their house and is stealing everything. Cindy Lou Who just sits there. And then they, meaning Cindy and the Grinch, have this common bond that is made. A bond that is made that allows them to have a connection. That later on in the story will be kind of a wink and nod connection that only they know about. Because only those two were present at that moment. Much like this connection between the angel, Gabriel, and Mary. They have a connection. They have had this conversation together about what is to come. What is happening in the life, in the world. What is about to happen. But only those two really know exactly what is being said and how it's being said. But when those two get together, they have that moment, that wink and nod moment, that moment of joy that is about to be brought to this world. Now, only they know exactly what has happened, and the Lord, of course, knows. But how would you feel if this woman came up to you and said, I just had this encounter with the angel Gabriel, who told me that I'm pregnant. I don't think many people would have thought wisely of her. Let's just say that way. Even in our society today, we, as a society, look differently at unwed mothers. Can you imagine what that would have looked like back then? And then there's, old, there's Joseph standing over in the corner going, I had nothing to do with this. This was not me. This was, I, had, I was in the other room, I promise. Can you imagine what those conversations would have been like? I want you to imagine yourself in those situations. Whether it be Cindy Lou Who's seeing something going on that only you and one other person might have seen, or maybe it's an encounter you've had with the Spirit. How hard has it been for you to be able to articulate exactly what happened in that moment? 
What was going on in your mind? What was going on in your head? What was going on? And how hard was it to articulate that to somebody that wasn't even there? Wasn't present? Wasn't able to see or feel or have those moments with you? Or hasn't experienced the, any sort of moment like that? What is that like? Well, you know exactly how you feel, and you know you're exactly right with what you are thinking. But how is that perceived otherwise? You know, we as a society tend to think each and every one of us is right. We always have to have, quote unquote, the last word. We always have to have the, be the right one in a conversation. But what happens when there isn't a right person? What happens when there isn't a right way of saying things? What happens when we as individuals haven't been given the whole story, the whole narrative, to understand exactly what happens? Now, I can only imagine when Mary went to Elizabeth what that conversation was like. Because here Mary is saying, I just had this conversation with the angel Gabriel. And not only did he, was I told that I'm carrying the next son of God, but you're also pregnant and you're six months along. Now, I can only imagine what those conversations would have been like. But also, I wonder if they felt, could this even be right? Because what did they do for the next three months? They spent themselves, they took themselves, and they were isolated themselves for the next three months. And I can only imagine that in that time, in those conversations between the two of them, they were trying to figure out exactly, A, what has happened, and B, how do we tell everybody what has happened? Because none of this makes sense in the rational sense of the words. So Mary comes up with a whole song. It's called the Magnificent. It's Mary's song. It's Mary's song of praise for what is about to occur, what is about to happen, what is about to be presented to the world. And yet, no one really believes her. Mary then returns after that three-month stint with Elizabeth, returns back to Joseph. And I'm sure he's had some explaining to do in the time period as well. But they go back to their life as it was. After an encounter like that, could you ever really go back into life as it was? Each of us has had encounters that have changed our lives completely. But I don't think any of us have ever had an encounter so in-depth that this could happen. When onlookers would see this couple walking, as they had to walk to get back to Nazareth after this time period was over, I can only imagine what people were saying, what people were thinking without saying, what people would do to this couple, this couple that they knew was not married. They knew what she was bearing a child. What would happen in the minds when we as onlookers have a chance to know the entire story? Our thoughts are different. Our feelings are different. The ways in which we view something is different. But we have to have that entire story. And so for us, we know the entire story of Mary. We know the entire story of Jesus. So it's easy for us to have these positive thoughts about these situations. But remember, in this time, they had no clue as to what was going on. And when you have no clue as the entire story, it is easy for us as human beings to not only 
impose views on individuals, but think about and get set in our minds how we think about things. But then, we hear a line that Mary says. A line that is probably one of the most important lines of this scripture. It comes in verse 38. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. That line sets up the rest of Mary's life. That line sets up the rest of Mary's journey. That one sentence makes it possible for Mary to function in our scripture the way she does. She says, I am a servant of you, Lord. I will do with what you ask. servant of the Lord. She's no longer living of the world. She's no longer living according to the world. She's no longer worried about what the world sees. Instead, she is totally inflicted by her call to do this for the Lord. To be the mother of the Lord's child. With just one conversation, with one thought, with one mind, she had changed her life and the life of so many for the rest of the world with a lifelong commitment. Now, I'm not sure that she had exactly in her mind that everything was going to go down the way it went down? I'm almost certain she didn't. But she was ready to, for that lifelong journey. A journey that was put on her by the Lord. Now, Cindy Lou didn't have nearly as important of an interaction that Christmas Eve. And yet had s many of the same reactions to what occurred. She was perplexed. She was dumbfounded. She was scared. But in each, each of those moments, there was a connection made. A connection that would change their lives for eternity. A connection that was made that would empower themselves to do differently. A connection that was made that gave a clearer picture for each and every one that was involved. Now we as individuals place views, place characterizations, and more often than not, that characterization or that view more than likely overshadows what that person is actually about what that situation was actually meant for, or how that situation was to be done or taken. Now remember, in Mary's journey, all anybody was concerned with, it seemed, was what she looked like, what the situation was. They cared nothing about the fact that she was carrying Jesus. Because that would have changed that entire story. But instead, because they, the innkeepers, they, the individuals walking that trail with them, they, those people, remember it all comes back to the human being, the people were not entrusting of what had happened to her. But she, she knew the truth. She knew she was right. She knew exactly how this would become. Because she trusted 
the Lord. She entrusted to be a servant of the Lord. And she spoke to the Lord. And let, him, let the Lord know that she was there for the Lord. To do whatever the scripture and do whatever she was told to do by the Lord. So may we be, as we go out amongst our people this season and beyond, may we be more about serving the Lord and less about serving the world. Amen? For a miracle, the heart longs for a little bit of hope. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. The child prays for peace on earth, and she's calling out from a sea of hurt. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel.
O come, O come, Emmanuel. That is what we are celebrating here in this Advent season. Please rise and receive this merry song as our benediction today. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with me, looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and the Holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he has made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her, her sister Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. So may we today return home knowing that Mary is in our heart, Jesus is in our heart, and the Spirit is in our heart, and that we may not weigh from that. We may not stray from that. And we may go into this world with the love of Christ each and every day. Amen? Amen.